for nearly eight years now, but I focus mainly on Facebook and Instagram for the last like three to four years. Um, so I could just basically specialise in it. Um, so before we begin, it'd be kind of good to know um, how like acquainted are you guys with Facebook ads? If, would you say you're a novice? Use them before, or you, you use them like fairly regularly? I started using Facebook ads, but um, it started like coming out of my bank account, and it was just like, oh my god, all these payments. So I stopped it because I didn't sort of trust it. Right. Okay. Fair enough. Anyone else? Uh, I've got lim On you go, Neil. Sorry, I've got limited um, uh, experience of Facebook ads, which is why I'm here, so to learn a bit more. Other platforms, a bit more Facebook ads, not so much at all, to be honest. Okay. Cool. Um, we've got a few few in the chat, um, used before, but looking to pick hints and tips and never done Facebook ads, so a, a mix. Brilliant. Okay. So, um, yeah, this is basically for people that... Um, have never used Facebook ads or people that have used them but weren't really sure what they were doing while they were doing it as like most of us have been at one stage. Um, so the whole point of this um, exercise is to first of all basically tell you what you should know before you start a Facebook ad campaign. So the very like top level basics um, and also I want to give a little bit of um, insight into messenger ads and the reason why I say that is because I'm a um, mini chat agency partner, which means that I create chatbots for people which are messenger ads and they're really, really good, great at getting leads and um, quite cheap. So I wanted to talk about that as well, which again, I'll keep it high level, but it just shows you this is what you should know um, going forward. So let's kick off. So um, what's coming up? We're basically going to look at um, the top five reasons to advertise on Facebook, how to set up your ad account, how to install the Facebook Pixel, how to navigate your ad account, what saved custom and lookalike audiences are, an intro to Messenger and third-party platform ManyChat, Messenger campaign types, why quality versus quantity matters, um, Messenger email and email working in harmony and how to measure performance on your Facebook ads. Um, we're also going to follow this up with a bonus guide, um, which we'll send at a later date, but um, that will tell you about how to manage Facebook ads now. Um, particularly with the, the current situation that's going on. So let's go. Okay, so top five reasons to advertise on Facebook. So the main thing is, oh, I didn't know it did that. <laughs> Give me a sec. Need to move everybody out the way a little bit. Um, yeah, so Facebook has a lot of users. Um, and when I mean a lot, I think it's something by like over 1.5 billion users in the world. And although like, that doesn't seem like, right, okay, what does that mean to me? It's basically about a fifth of people in the world use Facebook. And that's not taken into account inactive accounts or people that don't, you know, people that don't use accounts at all. Um, so it's still fairly huge. And you probably realize and are seeing this, but even currently, there's even more activity in Facebook. People communicate with their loved ones. Um, and also a lot of businesses that usually advertise on Facebook aren't doing it. So it's actually prime real estate at the moment and it's a lot cheaper and there's a lot more people on the platform at any one time, which is great. Um, Facebook's audience targeting capabilities are granular. So what I mean by that is um, you can really kind of dig down, like Facebook, um, people update Facebook, even whether you love it or hate it, with every little small detail of their, their lives. It could be we just got married, we've just had an anniversary, I've just had a child, I've just started a job. Um, people even like purchase on Facebook or they will visit a, a website that has a Facebook pixel on it. So the, Facebook knows a lot of information about you if you're on it and about your target audience. And again, I say it's a love-hate thing. I'm not in love with the idea of like somebody knowing all my data. However, um, it does allow for businesses to really kind of hone in on who their target audience is. And people are still buying on Facebook. So it's not a case of, um, you know, it's not working. Like we're still seeing amazing results with Facebook. So, you know, if it works, it's worth using. Um, the other great thing about Facebook is um, Facebook has got lookalike audiences. And what this means is like you could upload, if you've got a list of like email addresses or customers and you've got over a list of a hundred and they are on Facebook, then you can create a lookalike audience of those people. And Facebook will basically take about three over 300 different data points about your existing customers. Like 
age, um, location, um, interest, behaviours, and we'll go and look for more people like that audience, which means it's far easier um, to target people like your target audience than it is for a lot of the other kind of advertising platforms like Google. Google are trying to do it, but again, because Google doesn't have the, the targeting capabilities of Facebook, the lookalike audiences are never good. Same with LinkedIn. I've tested out LinkedIn audiences. Again, not very good. Um, do you have a question there, Lee? Sorry. Yeah, so I, I've used Facebook ads in the past doing it myself and also in junction with Yale.com. I found it to be more uh, raising awareness for my services, dental services. Um, I've tried targeting specific groups, but unfortunately my conversion rate has always been poor. I have used organic as well as paid options. Um, I have two, PN, two pages for two locations and always struggled to merge both. More of just more of a comment, I think. Right. Um, okay. Um, well, that's really interesting. As I as I walk through this, I'll show you where Facebook works best. But I have used Facebook ads in the past for dental um, clinics um, and like hypnotherapy clinics. All of these kind of clinics have worked really well. Um, however, it may be like a different kind of uh, strategy than what you probably um, you've used before. Um, so yeah, like at the end, I can go into more detail about that. Um, so Facebook also has a wide range of ad types. So um, obviously you see the ads that pop up that it's got like an image of a product or an image of a service. Um, it's also got lead forms and Facebook Messenger. Now lead forms are, if you've never used them, say you want to book a consultation with somebody, an ad comes up saying book a consultation with your dental clinic. The lead form, uh, you click on the ad and it actually opens up a form on Facebook. So you don't, you don't need a landing page, you don't need a website. Um, well, you do need the URL, sorry, I shouldn't say that. You, should, you need a privacy policy, but you can fill in the details on the lead form on Facebook um, and it's done in seconds. And also Facebook automatically populates with the person's email address and telephone number if they're doing it from their phone. So there's less barrier to them putting information into the form, which therefore means you get more leads. So lead forms and again, Facebook Messenger similarly, I will talk about that more. But the range of ad type types is far more than Google and LinkedIn. And again, I've used both. Um, although there's different intent with these users, they're maybe not, didn't even think about like going to the de dental clinic before. Um, it is a far better option than Google for cold audiences um, with ad types. And um, last of all, you can achieve incredible return um, on revenue with like Facebook ads. I've worked with campaigns where people, um, like literally, this is like one of my US campaigns back a couple of years ago, they were spending something like £60,000 a month on sports supplements for Facebook ads, and we're making five times that. And taking into account profit margin and everything like that, the, the return was incredible and they could not get across any other kind of marketing platform. Even with lead ads um, done properly, you could spend maybe 300 to £500 a month on Facebook ads and get... 10 times that in return, depending on what your business model is. So you could achieve, if done effectively, get really good return on revenue that you will not see in most other places or that I haven't seen um, where I've worked. Okay, so now how to set up Ads Manager. Now, like, I'm, I'm not going to go into great detail about this because you can go onto Facebook and type in how to set up Ads Manager, but um, sometimes it can be a little bit confusing because there's a, maybe a few different pages you go to. However, if you don't have an ads manager set up, this is the very first thing I would do. I would first of all go and set up your business page if you don't have that already. So you go to Facebook, just type in create Facebook business page and set that up. Once you set that up, Facebook automatically creates an ad account for you. So you do not need to set up a new one. You can if you want, but like it automatically does this. This creates a, a business ad account. So you're going to be able to view that by going to your business page, and then there's a small little cog in the corner and it says settings, click on that and that should show your ads manager. Um, there, again, there's other ways about it that you can Google, but that's probably the quickest way for you to see whether you've got an ad account or not. Once, if you've just, if you've never used the ad account before, then the very first thing it will ask you to do is to input your currency and your time zone, which of course you know that, that shouldn't be difficult, um, and also to update payment details and you need to do that before you, you create any ads, otherwise they won't save. So these are the first things I would do. And then invite anyone who you'd like to manage 
your Facebook account. So um, if you've got like an admin person, always have somebody else on your account because what I've seen a lot in the past is people say, oh, my Facebook account's been hacked. I've no idea how to, to get back again. And it's usually um, somebody's changed the details on it. However, if you've got more than one person, then you've got a backup. So if you're the only person on an ad account right now, I would say get somebody else that you trust on it straight away. Um, so I've got a link here. I don't know if you're sending out the slides, Lee, but um, this is a step by step um, to how to set up your, your Facebook account. Now, this is a very simple version. It never goes quite as smoothly as that, but this should hopefully get to what you need to do. So once you set up your Facebook ad account, you need to install a Facebook pixel. So are people confident they know what a Facebook pixel is? Have they used it before? Do they know what it does? If, um, guys, if you could either give us a thumbs up or comment in the chat box if you know what that is or, or you don't, that would be useful. Um, so we've got what, two no's, three no's, four no's, uh, yeah. two yeses. Um, yeah, so I'm a mixed bag, Leanne, which is... Okay, okay well, that's kind of good to hear, but I, I, kind of not, because I think what happens is people get, uh, don't really understand the power of Facebook because they're not using Facebook Pixel. So what the Facebook Pixel is, is it's basically, it's a little bit of code that um, you add to your website, which allows Facebook um, to do things like track activity on your website. So it'll track visitors to your site. Um, depending on how you put the code on, it could be people that filled in a contact form. It could be people that viewed certain product pages. Um, so that's something you should be doing on a very base level because you can retarget those people with ads or even you can not retarget them just now, but Facebook will build a picture of who that audience is for you and will create an audience pool in the ads manager of the, so they'll do that for up to 180 days. So at the very first thing I would do is get a Facebook pixel on your, your account and I'll show you quickly overview of how to do that in a minute. It can be really simple depending on what your platform is. What it also does is it collects data about visitors to your site. So um, remember what I was saying about um, it builds up a picture. So if, if, you, if you imagine like the World Wide Web, um, most companies, um, yeah, a lot of companies will have a Facebook pixel on their site. So every time your, um, say, customer A um, goes to a website, that pixel tracks what they're doing unless they've got unless that person has an ad blocker so this is how it's building up information so it's not just what they're doing on their facebook page it follows them around the world wide web oh right they've purchased a barbecue oh right they really like garden centers so it's collecting all that data about that visitor to your site and that allows you to um you know just again build a picture because remember what i was saying about lookalike audiences the more a picture it builds about your perfect customer the easier it is to target more people like your customer. So again, why you should have a pixel on your site. It also optimizes ad campaigns and it's got better and better. So I, when I first started um, the Facebook pixel, it was great for tracking, um, but it wasn't particularly good at anything else. You had to still, you know, tell Facebook to look for specific things about person. All oh, right, I like, can you look for somebody that shops at Waitrose and does this and does that? However, if you've had your Facebook pixel on your account long enough and you have enough traffic coming to your site, the pixel understands who your, um, who your perfect person is, the person that fills in the contact form. It builds a picture of that person. And what Facebook is now saying is, as long as you send enough traffic to your site, you should theoretically be able just to set up an ad campaign with a really big audience of millions of people and it should be able to find your perfect customer. Um, and where I'm seeing this, and it does work, like I've, I've worked with, uh, I'm currently working with companies that have been um, running uh, Facebook ads, I've had a pixel on their account for years, have had lots of purchases, and we're pretty much sent, setting up lookalike campaigns with like 4 million people in it, and it's able to get the, the, the sales. Um, so it's working really well, and it's, you know, again, you're, we're not seeing that in any other kind of uh, platform. It also builds audiences for future ads. So as I said before, it tracks activity. So it, it can build audiences that visited your site in the last 30 days, in the last 180 days, it, um, or people that have been on your site more than once, or people that have spent a lot of time on your site. Um, there's lots of kind of different angles that you can come, come from, but it, it creates those audiences for you to use at any point up to 180 days. So it's, even if you don't use it now, it's worth kind of setting it up. It also allows you to remarket to people who have taken an action on your site. So 
as I mentioned before, if somebody comes onto your site in the last like 30 days, that's usually a good time for a lot of people to retarget with offers. Or you might say, like send an ad out saying, oh, hi, do you have a question? Uh, we noticed you were on the sales page, do you have a question? Or, um, or we noticed you might be interested in this service. Uh, we're currently offering 20% off. Would you like to take us up? So there's lots of really cool stuff that you can do with that and not have to spend a fortune, depending on how much your traffic is, you can literally have that set up for a pound a day. Um, so it should be a no-brainer for anyone that's using their website and is sending traffic there. And um, so to set up the pixel, so you set up your ads manager, there's a tab in ads manager called events manager, and um, you click, and click on a button, and if you've not done it already, it will say set, click set up, and it will give you this option here, this box here. Um, so there's three options it gives. You can add the code as a partner integration. And what this means, if you've got Shopify, WordPress, Squarespace, any of the big kind of platforms, um, it, will, it, will, it will integrate it for you more or less. It can pretty much set it up for you. Um, manually add pixel code to website. That's if, you're a little, if you've got custom websites. I would, unless you're really technically literate, literate, I would have a developer or somebody help you with that or email instructions to a developer. So you can just click that, put in their email address, and it will send all of the information over to the developer for you. So you don't really need to take much to do with it. So again, it, it depends on what your platform is, but it can be very simple to set up. It could take minutes, or if you've got a custom website, it could take longer than that. And it's worth really kind of researching this and investigating what kind of pages and things you need to put that on. So does that make sense? Does anybody have any questions about that? No? No, I think we're good. I think we're, we're good. Oh. Yep. Okay. Awesome. Right, so how to navigate, navigate through your ad account. So this is, I'm just going to move this out of the way forever. <laughs> um, so this is your ad account here. This is what you'll see in Ads Manager. Um, so the, the tabs, the, they keep changing the layout. So this is the most recent one. I quite like it. It's easy to navigate around, but um, it can look very bewildering to somebody that's never used it before. So the main thing that I just need you to know is the yeah, account overview here is just, it gives you an overview graph of your performance. And the, the way that you should approach this is your ad campaign is like an umbrella. So the, the campaigns level, this is the very top level. This is what, um, oops, sorry, ahead of myself there. Um, this is where you choose what the objective of your campaign is. So Facebook's got different objectives. It might be that you want to raise awareness of your business, or it might be that you want to reach people within a target area, or you might want people to watch a video, or you might want people to convert. So people, you want people to actually have a sale, like straight away buy from you, or you want to send traffic to your website, which I advise Anybody that's not had any traffic to their site and they've got a good site that converts well and they've maybe not got a lot of data in their pixel, I would suggest set up a traffic campaign first of all, just to get traffic and just to see um, you know, how people behave on your website. And also you can set up leads. So campaign objective, that's where you think, right, what do I want people to do? What actions do I want them to take? Then underneath campaign level, you've got ad sets. So this is where you choose audiences, schedule and budget. So you might decide, right, I want to have a traffic campaign and I want to basically get lots of people that um, are like my website visitors. So you create your audience, a lookalike of your website visitors. You set a budget, right, five pounds a day, 10 pounds a day and a schedule. So you might just say, right, let this go daily. That's fine. Or you might say, oh, I want that to finish on a certain date because it's a sale. So I don't want it to go beyond that date. So that's where you do that. So you could theoretically have one campaign that's a traffic campaign and be testing out lots of different audiences. So when you see the word ad sets, think audiences, that's what that means. Um, and if, if that's how you kind of work out um, how to kind of test uh, in Facebook. And then within each ad set, so you've got one campaign, you might have a few ad sets. Then within each ad set, you'll have an ad. And that's what people see on their Facebook or their Instagram or whatever. Um, and this is where you might choose the creative, the ad copy, you might split tef, test different images. Now, for the benefit of this, I've not gone mega into detail about what ads you can do because you, theoretically it changes with every business and also um, it depends on your, you know, your niche, you know, everything. So 
what I would suggest anybody do is if you want to know what kind of ads you should be doing, then just go to Facebook ads library, just Google it and you're able to type in the pages of your competitors or like brands that you really like and it will show you ads that they do. So you can see, oh, that looks really nice and you can pretty much copy it. So, <laughs> so that's what I suggest you do just if you're, you're starting out, but definitely, um, yeah, definitely do test different ads is all I would say there is like just um, don't set up one campaign, one audience and one ad and then hope it does well. Always run two to three different ads at the same time because it will always be a winner. Um, yeah, so I'll move on to the um, you get any questions about that? No? All good. Okay. Right, so custom saved and lookalike audiences. So these are the different audience types um, that Facebook has. So there's three. And um, this is what I was talking about with the granular targeting. So there's three different audiences. Now this is what, if you go into the audience tab of ads manager, you can create your audiences here, or you can do it when you're looking at ad sets. So there's two different places you can create them, but just for simplicity, I usually create mine in audience tab first. So probably before I do anything, before I even think about what an ad looks like, um, I go in and create audiences because I, that's where you should always begin. Like who is my target audience? So if you've had the pixel on your website, absolutely 100%, you should be looking at your website visitors. So you can set up a, um, an, aud an audience of website, <laughs> um, of website visitors to your site for up to 180 days. So that's one of the first um, audiences that I would create. Also, if you've been running any lead campaigns, um, I would be creating an audience of them. If you have an e-commerce site and you're selling product, I would have an audience of people that have purchased um, or added to cart. And also you can create audiences of people that have engaged with your Facebook page or your Instagram page or um, watched any of your videos. So these are custom audiences. These are audiences that have already taken an action and are already aware of what your product is. Look like audiences are people that are similar to your existing audiences. So here, as you can see, I've created a lookalike audience of my website visitors. Now be careful here with a lookalike audience, you do need a minimum of 100 people in your existing audience. Also, the more you have in that original audience, the better the lookalike. So it's really important that you use like ideally that the best audience you can use is a customer list. If you've got a, li a an email list of customers and like when it comes to GDPR, obviously you need their consent if you want to retarget to them. So I wouldn't do that unless you do have the consent. However, you can create a lookalike of that email list and it'll go and find more people like those as long as they're on Facebook. So yeah, that, that's what a lookalike audience is. Um, you can create a lookalike of um, your customers, your email subscribers, visitors to your website, people that purchased from you, people that have um, created videos. So just think any of your custom audiences you can create a lookalike audience from. And then the third and the last audience is saved audiences. So these are where you can get really into targeting. So you might do this if you don't have a lot of um, data on the pixel, it's not been seasoned, you don't have a lot of visitors to your website currently, then you might want to start afresh and start targeting people specifically. So here from a marketing point of view, um, I've chosen business owners and page admins. So um, I want to help people who um, run their own business that are probably, you know, are the only one in their business or one of a small team um, and they are pretty hands on with their ads. So I would target business owners and page admins in Scotland or, for example, female business owners who like Amy Port Porterfield, who's, you know, an influencer in the UK. So you can get really kind of detailed with that. You can choose people based on where they shop, anything. And like, when I go on to the next one, this is why it's important that you create this first. This is probably the most important part, but probably the least done part. Whenever I speak to somebody, I, I would say 75% of the time, they've not actually get any clue who their target customer is. They just want to target anybody that might buy their product. And there's a big danger in that, in that you're going to spend a lot of money in Facebook ads and never get the results that you want because your message isn't specific enough and you're not appealing to the right market. So before approaching Facebook ads, take 
an hour out and just sit down and think, right, okay, who's my target customer? What, where, what age are they? And you can have more than one. Um, you could choose to have like a top three or a top five. But the whole point is like you can, you know, have your favorite, like your ideal customer, first of all, like somebody that you know will spend a lot of money. What kind of person are they? Are they what age are they? Where do they live? Um, what's their job titles? Are they small business owners? What are their behaviors? Are they dog owners? Um, influencers, like who are they interested in? Gary Vaynerchuk and Neil Patel, and these are all kind of marketing ones. What websites do they like? Are they into fitness? Um, favorite online shops, Waitrose, Marks and Spencers, um, Rolex, also like luxury brands. Are they into that or are they more inclined to be um, interested in like Money Supermarket or Martin Lewis? You know, there's so there's get really kind of drilling into what kind of person they are. Um, also things like vintage clothing foodies, blah, blah, blah. If you can nail that, then that means that you can take that and then go to create audiences in Facebook and um, you're pretty much create, done all the work here. All you're doing is plugging this information into audiences, which makes it really easy for you. So I would suggest that's the very first thing you do. And then go spend some time creating audiences and then that's when I would go on to actually creating the ad campaigns. Leanne, I think yeah. uh, just to pitch in there, because I think people all understand this, but I think this is when the the dreaded boost button conversation comes in and that people yep. try to boost their posts on social media and then question why they're not seeing a return on investment. And I think once you start to understand the targeting, that's when your ads, you start to understand the value that ads can bring. Yeah, a hundred percent. Like boost can work and it can, it can work and it can't work, but you will never know why it worked. So you can't scale that. You can't do anything about that other than keep pressing the boost button and do nothing about it. So yeah, you're not in control with the boost button. You really need to do it this way to do it effectively. Was that another question that came in? I think I saw. Uh, I think I think Zoe was just saying that's why she that's why she stopped using ads. Um, it was the kind of using the boost button. I think so. Yeah. Right. Okay. Cool. Cool. Perfect. Right, so the next one is intro to Facebook Messenger and ManyChat. So if any of you used, like, first of all, you know what Facebook Messenger is. Do you use it, like, like personally, like, on a day-to-day -day basis? Do any of you use it? Give us, a, give us a comment or a thumbs up, guys. I only use Facebook and Messenger, really. I still need to get a website, um, actually, but I've never really needed one because um, Edinburgh Go Gossip Girls has really pushed my business, which is great, but... So I use um, Facebook and Facebook Messenger all the time for communication. Amazing. Yeah, me Messenger is good. The only thing I would say is do have a website just so that you can use the pixel to get information. And it doesn't yeah. have to be, it can literally be a landing page. You do not have to like spend a lot of money or time on this. Get, get a, like a Wix site or you know whatever. But yeah, Messenger is far becoming like one of the most popular tools um, and the ways that people communicate. So between Messenger and like WhatsApp, whereas Messenger is probably more used in the UK than in other countries. However, it's like if anybody's UK is their market, then I would definitely have some kind of um, something going on here. And like, I don't think I mentioned this, but one of the things, the key things is um, if you're using Facebook ads, people will go onto your Facebook page. So, and they might inquire through Facebook Messenger. So it's so important that you are on it and you are replying to people because if you're not doing that then the, the chances are they're not going to like try and buy from you because they want like kind of and when I say quick communication you can set up a chat bot that just answers basic questions so there's quick responses however if it's something more urgent you can put a little message saying somebody will reply to you within the next 24 hours and you know just be on top of it but have that because again, I've had lots of people that are very old school and they're like, oh, but you know, I don't want to use Messenger, but it doesn't matter if your customers are coming there, then you need to be on it. Um, so yeah, a little quote. I wonder if I put this down here, if that's going to be better. Um, yeah, so Neil Patel, big digital entrepreneur, I don't know if you've heard of him, but he's, basically he says, being an early adopter of Facebook Messenger bots will give you a huge advantage as a marketer. Facebook Messenger has been around for a few years now, messenger bots have been around for, I've been doing them for about two years, but UK is still very behind, which means there's loads of opportunity here. And I'll, I'll show you why, but like, there's just so much potential. So here are some Facebook messenger stats. So you're probably already using it. So more than 20 billion messages are exchanged between business and users monthly in Facebook messenger. And you know people prefer to message than phone nowadays. Plus it's easier for businesses to handle messenger than having to answer phone calls. So there's loads of benefits to it. 
Also, open rates are better than email. If you send somebody a message in Messenger, they're 70% more inclined to open it than it would, they would an email. So let that sink in. 70% more inclined to open that than an email. If you see, hear that ping, you're more inclined to look at that message. So if you think about your current email marketing, if you're using that hand in hand with Messenger, how much more potential there is even on your existing campaigns. Um, engagement is also better than email. So Messenger marketing leads to 70% better, oh no, right, I've just put the same message in there again, sorry. Oh, mistake. I can't remember the, the, the metric, but the, the engagement is better. Like from, I'm trying to think from, from my own perspective. For example, I ran a, um, a sale campaign through Messenger and it was the same time as year, year, it was for a vintage clothing client. It was the same time of year as the campaign we ran the, the same time previous year. Um, and the engagement, there was something like, I would say it was like 50% of people were engaging with the messenger post as, as in replying, saying thumbs up, great, wonderful. And what we were doing is we were sending out a discount code. We we're saying, hey, we're going to send you this. Are you in? And they were like, yeah, totally brilliant. And um, they were more inclined to engage with that than just an email. So yeah, really, really good stats on it. And what do I use? So obviously Facebook Messenger have their own, like if you set up an ad, they have their own messaging campaign. It's very basic, but basically if they want to do basic auto answers, then it's fine for that. But most of the time people can tell it's a bot. It's not very, you know, it's just not very user friendly. So ManyChat is a third party app that I personally use. I'm an agency partner with them. And the reason why I use that, and I've tried a few different ones, it's just been far easier and it's far simpler to use. And it's very kind of, I've got tons of tutorials, so it's really good to, to use. Um, and what you could do with the, the ManyChat third party messenger app is you can build like a little basic chatbot. And what you can do with the chatbot is you can link to your, um, so sorry, it, so for example, if you go onto your Facebook page and you click on send a message, then what you can do is you can um, auto reply here. You know, here's a link to this, here's a link to that. So you can actually like navigate people around your website, send them to a product page, depending on what the question is. You can also create auto responses and just say, thanks for getting in touch. If your query is really urgent, please do this. But it just means that they're getting that immediate response and um, navigate visitors. Notify page admin, so if something is urgent, then you can have an email sent to somebody or even a text message to say, look, can you deal with this urgently? So it means that you're not having to take Facebook Messenger all the time. Um, you can also create advertising campaigns, moving prospects through Messenger. So you can actually create an ad campaign, get somebody to click on an ad and then move them into Messenger. So it's, um, again, you don't need a landing page. It means you're not sending them to a website where they might just get lost. Um, and you can create a, start a conversation with them straight away. You can also create fun quizzes and competitions to increase engagement. I'll talk a little bit more, more about that later, but it's just got so many different uses. And across the board, I've used it for so many different things. And although there's been more um, you know, rules and regulations put in by, place by Facebook, they do like, they partner with many chats. They're very happy with the, the service they provide and the tool. And the great thing is you can use this software for something like $10 a month. So it's not, it's not expensive either. Um, so the types of messenger campaigns that you can use in Facebook. So with the Facebook messenger, there's three different things. So there's messenger ads. And what that allows you to do is you can advertise to people that have already messaged your page. So if you are like, um, you were saying that you get quite a lot, you use messenger quite a lot. Give me a sec. I've just realized my, back, my laptop's about to run out of charge. Give me a sec. Sorry. <laughs> Te technical, technical challenges of Zoom. Does, um, has anyone ever used any sort of messenger chatbots? Um, maybe just let us know in the chat. Um, we, we use them for, for a lot of our clients um, in many different industries and they're just really powerful when done properly. Um, okay, so one person, yes, and most people know. Okay, um, yeah, so messenger ads, yeah, you can send them, basically allows you to send a message as if, you know what, like a friend sending you a message um, to people that have already engaged with your page. So they must have already messaged your page. That's like really important because Facebook just don't want people being spammed by all these like um, pings, expecting it's going to be a family member or a friend. Um, there's also click to messenger ads. 
And that's where it appears just like any normal ad, but when they click the button, it then takes them into Messenger. And it has an opt-in that says, are you like happy to engage with this? Are you happy to proceed? So you can choose not to at that stage and then it just stops. However, if that person is really engaged, then they'll come into Messenger and they'll start the conversation with you. And then the third one is sponsored messages. Don't ever use these, they're pointless. <laughs> but basically, if you go into your Facebook messages, um, you'll see little ad adverts from businesses. I've never clicked on one of those. I've used them for clients and they've just not been successful. So out of all of those, I would say click to messenger ads are the ones that you would really want to do. So the four types of, um, four ways that I would use messenger. So, and I have used it for all of these. So the first one is lead generation. So you can invite prospects to sign up for a lead magnet. I don't know if you're all aware of marketing ter terminology here, but like you can sign them up for a lead magnet, like a guide or a brochure. And um, you can provide that in Messenger or send it by email by asking that person for their contact details in Messenger. Now, we are all less inclined to give up our per personal information anymore because we just don't want bombarded, right? So there's really got to be a way You've got to really add value here. Like you can't expect to throw something together and hope somebody like provides their email address and return for it. It's got to be really good, high quality lead magnets. Um, the kind of stuff that Lee uses is like really lovely brochures for you know camper vans and stuff like that, like in holidays and a lot of effort goes into it. So if you were going to use this, I would say you know use your best collateral that you've got for this kind of campaign. And what you can do is you can collect those contact details and you actually ask within Messenger, are you happy for us to follow up with further email marketing? So you've got that there as your backup. And obviously, once they're introduced into your email marketing, most email marketing platforms will ask for another opt-in from that person. So from a GDPR aspect, you're kind of covering bases there. Um, and people are really kind of, they, they, they tend to do it because it's so quick to do. It's like it automatically populates with their email address again. Um, so that's worked really, really well. And we've seen kind of leads from as little as like a, a pound a lead um, for these kind of campaigns. Now, that's not necessarily going to give you the best quality, but which I'll talk about later. However, that's worked really well. So the second um, way that we use it is for retargeting. So if you have got a specific page on your site that sh you know somebody must be really, really engaged in order to, so like your pricing page, um, or your services page and so they must have been really interested you could remarket them so you can send out an ad to them and say hi um uh, we know you might be interested in our services would you be interested in um set up, setting up a, a a call or a discovery call or a meeting and again you can take them in, into messenger um you can ask a couple of details about them book them in you know there's lots of different things you can do that way um it doesn't work all the time, but it has worked. I'm not saying that it's not it's something I would use all the time, but it's worth testing out depending on what your industry is. Engagement. This is really good for if you've got a brand new brand and you want to create a lot of buzz. So um, Facebook is not partial. It doesn't like um, competitions and giveaways. It doesn't. It will um, devalue that, and it will be show, like especially organically. And um, your page fans aren't going to see those posts as much. However. What we found is with Facebook Messenger campaigns, it's a little bit different. You seem to get away with a little bit more. And I think it's because if you're taking them to a third party software, it doesn't seem to understand what's going on, like, you know, what, what you're trying to do there. So the way that we've used this in the past is you can put a post on your page, like just, and you've got to watch your terminology. You can't say giveaway, competition, da, 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 you know, red flags. However, the way we've used it in the past is, would you like to, when a luxury holiday, da 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 da, like, and then it explained all the features. All you need to do is comment with this, or not use the word comment, but just like mention a, a holiday you've liked in the past, or something like that. And what happens is in the comments of Facebook, as soon as somebody enters anything in, that goes into um, Facebook Messenger. It will send them a few messages in Messenger. It will collect their email details if they're happy to give them. And um, like the, the response we've had from that has been amazing, hasn't it, Lee? Yeah, powerful. Yeah. Really, really powerful. We've used it across the platform. I've used it for lots of different industries. And it just, it just more buzz. Like people are like, oh, this is really cool. Like, oh, because they don't expect like a little Facebook pop-up to come up once they've, they've commented. 
And the, the, just to add there, we, we do this for multiple clients, but the opt-in rates are close to always close to 100%. And the click-through rates are incredible compared to a similar in an email marketing campaign or whatever. So, so yeah, it's really good for engagement. Yeah. And what you're doing is you're building your email list. You're building excitement. You're asking people to like your page as well. So you're building your page fans, organic page fans. And also what you could do is you can at a later date retarget people who didn't win with a follow-up offer. So there's so many things, so much bang for your buck you can get for that. And like the, the cost of the engagement is so low that it's almost like something I would suggest any brand does. And make sure that the, the thing that you're offering is your product, like the thing they win is your product so that it's a really relevant audience. Um, and it doesn't have to cost thousands of pounds. It can literally a couple hundred of your budget, depending on like what it is that you're giving, but um, worth doing. And the fourth one is retention. So say you've got a webinar like this or a conference or something where you know you want to make sure people definitely turn up for it, then you can do a messenger campaign. You can ask people, would it be okay for me to send a reminder to you in Messenger? And once they opt in, you can say, oh, remember that's in a day. And then, oh, remember it's in an hour. So it can be used for a lot of different things. It's really, really good in that way. And why quality versus quantity matters. And what I mean by this is, yes, you're going to get a ton of leads with Facebook Messenger, but the quality is not going to be as good as other routes. And um, so it's a kind of, you know, give and take. And I've kind of looked back through all my ad campaigns before to kind of get a gauge of it. And what I found is about 20% of the leads that you get are perfect. They're great. You're, you do, you call them and it's, or you email them and they're immediately respond. So very interested. About 30% warm. You might have to call them a few times. You will not like or you might have to follow up a few times. It might be like the usual seven to 15 point touch points before they are interested. And it's not that, I think what happens is because it is so easily to navigate through, they just get really interested at the time. And then after that, it just kind of wanes off and wait, as it does with any kind of ad that you send to somebody. So they'll need, still need a bit of work, but you know, it's worth doing. And then there's 50%, a massive half of them are freezing. And what I mean by that is they've clicked on the ad by accident. Uh, they didn't mean to, or it's a, your competitors clicked on it, they had no interest, or it's like, sometimes you might even find it's bots, um, it's like fake profiles. And I've tried ways around this, and there's just no way around it. Um, so it's give and take. So what you really need to do is work out, right, is this worth this? If I get 50 leads in, and 20% of them are really what I'm looking for, is that worth it? And I think in most cases, you find it will be. And the only thing is you need a bit more manpower. You will, you'll not, it's going to be a little bit more work up front than somebody that's filled in a very, very long form, provided lots of information and being pre-qualified first. And I'm not saying that you can't do that. With the messenger campaign, you can ask lots of questions, but your drop-off rate is going to be far higher. People aren't going to go all the way through. That's what I find. So yeah, that's something to bear in mind. I want to be completely honest about it. It's not perfect, but you know, hey-ho. So is that all, I feel like I'm rushing through it. Does that all make sense? Any questions about that so far? Sounds good. Sounds good. Right, so messenger and email. So I, I wouldn't say ditch email by any means because email is still king. Um, there's nothing better than owning your data. Many chat could collapse in your time and then all your information's gone or Facebook stops allowing many chat to use it. So I would say still have email set up, but use messenger and email together. And what I mean by that is use Messenger to get your brand new cold audience in cheaply and use email to nurture them. So I've, I've brought, a, this is just a quick diagram I did of a real life example of how we're doing this. So the first thing we're doing is we're using Facebook Messenger to run a competition where needle, people need to provide their email and like your page to enter, okay? Then what we do is add those participant, participants who have expressed permission to your email marketing campaign. So they'll get follow-up emails like once a week. Then we use Facebook Messenger and email to announce the winner. So they get that pop-up and they're like, oh, right, okay, oh, it's them again. Oh, oh, that person won. And you're kind of still in their, their minds. And you follow up with a secondary offer for the runners-up, discount off the next one or like, a, you know, and sorry, Lee, were you going to say something? No, 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 all good. So we're, we're following up, and again, that's in email and that's in Messenger. So anybody that's not opening your email, because we know that open rates aren't higher, are definitely getting the message in Messenger because the open rates are far higher. 
then what we do is the seed audience, the people that engaged that initial competition that we know are definitely interested because they, it was our service or our product that we were offering them or something similar, then we can create, because we've got so many people, because we've been able to do it cheaply, we're able to create a lookalike of that audience. And then we're able to not only retarget that audience with emails or if they've provided permission with further ads, but we can also send out brand new um, sales ads or you know leads ads um, to that lookalike audience. So we've got so much bang for our buck with these two things. Email and Messenger hand in hand work really well together. And the great thing about it is after you do your initial campaign, spend a bit of budget there. Most of this part's free apart from like um, paying for ManyChat, which is $10 a month up to 500 users or your email platform. And I think Leanne, just to pitch in there, I think mm -hmm. we've, so we've, we've got about five minutes left, but um, just what's, re what, what's really important is looking at your customer life cycle, uh, your prospect life cycle. So it might be that some businesses have a much longer um, uh, basically conversion process. So to be able to filter someone into email and messenger and have multiple touch points with them can nurture them down that funnel quicker. Um, rather than them just seeing an ad and then disappearing and then that might be the lead lost. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so I'll kind of quickly go through these. So how to measure ad performance. So I've met two different business owners. Check ads are loosely, ads are really loosely. Oh no, I've spent a pound, I've not had a lead yet, better switch these off. Or set a reminder for three days, Rob. Now, I'm, I didn't want to do gender stereotypes here. Just generally is how the, the images fell when I did this presentation. Um, but I know what my CPL is and I'm confident about the prep I put in. So I'll check these in a few days. And the, the big difference between these clients is confidence. And it's just generally just have confidence. See if you've done all the work. You know your audience is correct. You, you've worked out what your cost per lead should be. And I'm going to quickly talk about metrics in a minute. But as long as you know all of that, then just breathe because Facebook needs to learn. It needs to learn. The pixel needs to learn more about it. And it takes a few days, sometimes weeks, depending on what your budget is. And it will even say to you, well, it'll say learning. It'll actually say to its little ad set, but I'm learning, leave me alone. <laughs> so that's what you've got to do. And if you've got a smaller budget, it might take longer to get there. But once you do get there and the pixel knows your audience, brilliant. But you need to give it time. And when I say time, I'm talking about sometimes um, for you to get a perfect CPL, it could take up to three months or longer. Um, but in that time, you'll still be getting sales, still getting leads, but it's just perfecting the process. Um, so whenever you're thinking about um, how much money you need to spend on your ads, you need to ask yourself these questions, like how much revenue do I want to make a month? Start that, like start how much revenue do I want to make from Facebook ads? How many sales do I need on average to hit my target revenue? What is my current conversion rate? And therefore, how many leads do I need? So start off with these questions and also bear in mind your current conversion rate, if you're not doing any marketing, it's probably you get a lot word of mouth. Your conversion rate is higher than it's going to be with ads. Like obviously, if they've already heard of you, then there's a higher chance they're going to turn into a lead free. But um, with Facebook ads, um, it, start off with this and this should allow you to understand that, okay, this is how much money I actually need to make that amount of money. Um, so the target metrics, so I'm basing this all on leads, but the same goes for purchases. Um, above all else, it's cost per lead. That is what your target metric is. So if you've worked out your, what cost you're happy with max, let it, especially in the beginning, run to that. Like, so that's the very first thing. If you're getting that, the rest can, you know, you don't need to bother about the rest. However, if you're not getting that, you keep getting consistently too, you're paying too much per purchase or too much per lead then you've got to go and check your click-through rate. Is it 1% or higher for cold campaign, campaigns or 2% or higher for retargeting? This tells you how many people are clicking on your ad and landing on where you're wanting them to go. If the click-through rate is really low, it means you're not engaging enough or your audience isn't right, so you need to go and you know, troubleshoot what's happening there. Then I would look at cost per click, and this can range anywhere from 30p to a pound for cold campaigns. That's what I found, but it depends what your service is. And it gets more expensive for retargeting because Facebook knows that that audience is more valuable because they've already engaged with you. Um, and then lastly, cost per messaging conversation if you're using Messenger. I find it's usually between 50 pence to three pounds. But again, it depends on what you're, you're, what, what you're selling, what your industry is. Um, so yeah, that's it. That's me all done. Um, flew through that. <laughs> um, so yep, any questions? <laughs>
Cool. Are you okay just to stop sharing the the screen? Yeah. And then we'll just yeah, open no. up to open to open up to questions for the last few minutes. Um, if anyone wants to put it in the chat or unmic themselves, if there's any burning questions, let's uh, let's ask Leanne them. Um, have, uh, see if there's any any coming in. I think um, Zoe asked a question earlier on. She was wondering how to change. Um, to pounds rather than dollars in our settings for payments? Right, so this is a really annoying thing about Facebook is there are some things that should be so simple but aren't. Basically, if you've already set it for dollars and um, if you want to change it to pounds, you need to create a new ad account. So um, you can't do anything with the existing ad account, which it shouldn't be a problem for you. Creating a new ad account, as long as you don't have hundreds, you should be able to create a new ad account, no problem. But um, obviously, if you've got existing ads and data on there, then you might get like, oh, I don't want to really lose that. But and it was maybe worth just keeping the dollars. But yeah, you need to create a new ad account. Okay, thank you. No worries. Anyone else got any questions? Um, no, no question is a silly question. <laughs> um, if uh, if not, we'll um, we'll kind of. I think Neil's got a question. Well, yeah, just a, sorry, a really quick uh, tangential. There's a good word for a Tuesday morning question. Uh, Leanne, <laughs> did you did your presentation was great visually? I thought. Um, did you do that yourself, or was that acknowledgement at the end that someone else did it for you, designed it for you? Oh, slides go. I found. Yeah, them, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, they're really, really good. Um, so yeah, they're free, free templates as Okay, well. I just thought it was really attention grabbing and really Oh, thanks. Well. I'd like, yeah. <laughs> um, we've got a question from Paul. So when using the PG Insight tool, what should we be focusing on? PG Insight what, what tool. Sorry, that? that's Page, Page Insight. Page Insights. Oh, right. So this is like the IQ, like where you can yeah, see uh -huh. insights about your page. So... Again, this is something that way back in time, you were able to input your, um, oh right, are you talking about on your Facebook page? I think I'm about to go on a tangent there. Yeah, uh, when we're looking at um, basically um, information, so when we're looking at um, insights, really, what should we really yeah. be focusing on? Um, I think the big thing is obviously making sure that, um, like seeing how much engagement, so what's basically happening nowadays is what I'm finding is organic engagement on page, is usually a lot less than 20% because Facebook is wanting you to spend money on, you know, increasing yeah. your posts. So if you're finding your engagement is a lot lower than 20%, then what I would say is like, you need to kind of look at what the content is that you're putting on your page. But I would definitely be using it for, for things like um, reach, checking out um, like how many new fans you've got on site, that kind of thing. However, I mean, to be honest with you, I don't use Facebook page insights a lot. I, a lot of my attention is in the ads manager in the back end. Um, right. That gives, kind of gives me a better idea. But with page insights, the main thing that I look for whenever I um, think about a customer's business page is, the, first of all, it looks good. That They've got like their header looking good. They've got a bio. They make sure they've got like all the story. Everything's filled in. That they are, um, I would definitely be suggesting that you're posting two to three times a week to try and keep your engagement up. And then think about every post that you make, what you're trying to do is to get at least a like, a share and a comment on that post. If you get all three, then that is good for your organic algorithm. And it means that Facebook is going to allow your post to appear in more people's organic news feed. Um, so if you can think about that whenever you're planning out what your posts are, then that's something that I would definitely do. Um, and I think that that comes back to audience targeting. So really make, making sure that the organic content you're creating is speaking exclusively and directly to the audience that you're trying to connect with. And it's all about the value. It's, you know, giving that audience value so that they actually want to engage with the posts. And, and that's the foundation of once you get that right, your ads and the targeting and um, becomes a lot easier. Um, Can I just say as well, sorry to interrupt, but this is where, where I was talking about the messenger, the Facebook post. So um, if you're doing a giveaway or competition, likes, share comments, that's actually a really good boost to a page if you've not had any engagement on a, in a while. It's a really good way, way to get it restarted again, if you've got the, the ability to do that, obviously. But um, yeah. Awesome. Cool. Um, 
if there's any other questions, let us know. But I think we'll we'll kind of bring it to a close and let people mm -hmm. get on with their with their days. Um, just a quick heads up: on Thursday, we've got a storytelling workshop about how to use photography and videography uh, in your business. Um, links really closely to the whole Facebook ads thing about um, how to use visuals and how to use video to get uh, increased reach and better engagement on your on your content. So uh, that's Thursday at 10 a.m. Um, the same link will apply, so just log in to the, this link and uh, hopefully we'll see you then. But uh, thank you very much, Leanne. Thank uh, you. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. And have Thanks, an amazing, guys. amazing Bye. day. Thank you. <coughs> Bye. Thank you. Cheers.